In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. The time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to hear what their itching ears want to hear. Uh, they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Uh, but you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge the duties of your ministry. For I've already been poured out like a drink offering and the time has come to my departure. I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. What a wonderful word of scripture again. And I actually think that this little passage of scripture, I think the Lord has really blessed us with a precious pearl of scripture uh, this morning. And I, I think it's really precious. I say precious in the first place because um, this is Paul's last charge to Timothy. Um, in some ways, after his uh, first letter, now his second letter and everything he's had to say in this second letter, it's like a bit of a crescendo, a majestic crescendo at the end of his literary composition. Um, in other ways, it's like the uh, final deathbed words, parting words from a father to a son, sort of conjures up the, the, the um, solemnity of Moses' final words to Israel before his own death. And, and it encapsulates the most important things he wants to say. And in the space of eight short verses, he bundles in uh, nine imperative commands, a whole bunch of uh, unique words not found anywhere else in scripture. But I say that it's it's a precious pearl, not only for these reasons, but also because uh, it speaks to our life and ministry in our strange times today. Um, and while you know plagues themselves are not unprecedented, I suspect that our experience of them is. And I know that many of us are doing it really quite tough at the moment, um, whether that's trying to support our families or trying to focus on assessments or work or trying to find some semblance of sanity when every day feels like a bit of a groundhog day. Um, and I know, uh, and I suspect that there are more than those that I know, that there are many of us finding uh, this time a bit of a, a spiritual slog, a time of testing, if you will. I can, I can identify with some of these things. In fact, I wrote to someone uh, yesterday to say, look, I've, I've just got to keep my head above water at the moment. And then as I came to read this passage and sit down and prepare for this sermon, I realized that actually this is a really precious uh, word to us. Oh, why? Because it, it gently but firmly pushes us along to discharge the duties of our ministry or the older translations to fulfill thy ministry. And, and that's really the charge that kicks off with these first two verses of the passage. In fact, it's, it's just one long sentence in the original that the context of this charge is the closeness of God, we might say. That is the current reality of God's presence, the former reality of Christ's coming, and the future reality of Christ's Second coming to judge the living and the dead, as we say in the creed. You know, COVID and its attendant pressures may feel really near, but these divine and ultimate things are nearer still. And, and if that's the context of this charge, then the content of the charge is simply this. Preach the word. Preach the word. Or to, Pick up the language that Paul uses throughout his letters to Timothy. Um, preach the pattern of sound teaching. Preach 
sound doctrine, preach these things, preach these words of truth. His um, apostolic words are the word which ought to be preached. Simple at one level, perhaps not so simple at another level. You know, Paul tells Timothy to herald these words of truth, to have these words on standby when the seasons are uh, easy or hard. You can resonate with that. Um, to use these words to correct, to use these words to uh, rebuke, to use these words to um, get alongside and encourage. So this kind of using involves more than citing scripture uh, on its own. Now, and this also involves more than preaching sermons on Sundays. Sometimes we can constrain the application of these verses to that kind of thing. Th this using has broad application. You can imagine Timothy in his uh, ministry getting around uh, doing various things in various times in various places. Broad application. And for us too. And especially at this time. Let me just tug on one little thread of application for the moment. If I'm honest, um, I think that I've often glossed over the words in verse 2 to come right at the end. I've been really, you know, gripped by the things that have just been said, and I, I kind of glossed these little bits at the end with great patience and careful instruction. But this um, manner and this mode of operating is massively helpful as we minister the word to others. Because I think, you know, especially in COVID times, our patience is in short supply. And in COVID times, our carefulness is often curtailed. You know, would that the Holy Spirit would supply us with more patience and more carefulness as we minister in our various contexts and communities. For all that the preaching of the word entails, we really need to do it that way. Carefulness, patience. So, you know, if the context and the content of the charge is pretty important, Paul could have really just left it there. But he gives two additional reasons to reinforce the charge. Firstly, from verse 3, the circumstances. He says, for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. He says they'll suit their own desires and gather a gaggle around them to tickle and to turn their ears away from truth and towards myth. You know, if Timothy ministered in the Anglican Church of Australia, these would have been salient sentences about doctrine and desires. But in his own first century context, there were plenty of doctrine distorters and myth makers to go around. You know, there were resurrection deniers. There were second coming deniers. There were uh, destroyers of the faith like Humanaeus and Philetus. What do we have? Well, we've got popular preachers that uh, sermonize more about success than salvation. We have pretentious preachers that ridicule and uh, rationalize away the wrath bearing redemption of the cross. And we even have preachers who preposterously present Jesus' blood as a vaccination against COVID. What's Paul's advice to Timothy and to us? It's this keep your head, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. In other words, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Or to put it another way, like the, the little mug, the cup, keep calm and carry on. We, we live in a crazy and confused world and we need to stay focused on the main game of preaching the word of life. That's, that's our duty. You know, often the word duty is kind of frowned upon in servants but this this is not the way that paul's speaking about it here this is a joyful duty and responsibility what a gift to be able to do this it's a joy we need to preach we need to teach this word of eternal life 
the great English Reformation preacher Hugh Latimer uh, in his sermon on similar things says, therefore preach and teach and let your plough be doing. If you uh, live idle and loiter and do not your duty, you uh, follow not your vocation. Let your plough therefore be going and not cease that the ground may bring forth fruit. I like that. The sermon on the plough. Keep ploughing on. OK, so the importance of Paul's charge is, uh, you know, this charge is underscored by the circumstances. The second reason Paul gives Timothy to underscore this charge is the crown, the crown. It's as if Paul is saying to Timothy, I'm giving you this charge, not only because of the crazy times we live in, but also because, you know, you're going to be on your own very soon, actually. I'm not going to be around for much longer. Verse 6, I'm already being poured out like a drink offering and the time has come for my departure. This would have been bittersweet words for Timothy to hear. Verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And it kind of conjures up images of Paul being stoned or Paul undertaking missionary adventures or Paul debating in Athens or uh, in argument in Rome. And in verse 8, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And, you know, there's a lot to love about these verses. Uh, one of the things that I love is Paul's sense of confidence in Christ. You know, there's no maybes here. There's no perhapses. There's no, you know, maybe I've been good enough for this. But there is, there is a crown for me. Uh, the Lord will award it to me. But you know what I love uh, even more than this is the next few words that come along, and that is to say, uh, Paul says, and not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Not just Paul. There's more than that. Well, the Apostle Peter puts it this way, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Now, Paul and Peter... They were not perfect people. Let's not be tricked into thinking these are perfect people. These were not sinless sorts. They were saved sinners like us. They had their, their kind of filthy rags bathed in the blood of Christ like us. They were simultaneously just and yet sinful like us. They were hard pressed. They were perplexed like us in many ways. And yet they were still hopeful of heaven. They discharged their ministerial duties and they were confident of the majestical crown. And uh, if you know, you're watching this today, whether you feel like you're just surviving or whether you're thriving, um, doesn't matter where you are on that spectrum, can I encourage you to consider that crown? You might, you might feel a bit uncertain about the uh, end of lockdown, but you can feel certain about the end when you'll receive this crown. You might feel that the race against COVID feels hopeless, but you can be sure that at the end of your race, Christ will award you that crown of victory. If you want something really practical to take away, here's this. I'll give you something really practical. Whenever something um, hard might come along your way today or tomorrow or this week, Whatever uh, circumstance could be relational, could be work, could be assessments, could be personal, could be temptation, whatever the case, whatever it is, I just would like you to imagine, consider that crown in front of you. Consider that crown of victory that awaits you. Just, just even picture it there physically in front of you. There's a little bit of a, a way to jog your, your heart to consider that crown. It could be replying to an email. It could be a interpersonal conversation. Um, it could be something to do with your student ministry. But whatever it is, consider that crown that lies before you and in front of you confidently. In other words, keep going. 
is my word for the day. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. In fact, I really prefer that older translation, fulfill thy ministry. Short like the original, and it contains a, a sort of purpose built into it, which is why I really like it. It seems to fit with Paul being poured out like a drink offering. But most of all, it seems to fit with Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, it seems to fit that the biblical pattern of suffering then glory, of the cross before the crown. And just like that second read, that New Testament reading, for as our gracious God tells us, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So brothers and sisters, uh, this little precious pearl of scripture uh, says to you, have the crown before you this week as you fulfill your ministry. Let me pray. Almighty God, you know what uh, troubles our hearts. There's nothing that can be hidden from you. As we seek to minister the word this week, help us through all circumstances to remember the glorious crown prepared for us through the cross of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.